What's up, everyone? It's DV, and boy, do I have a treat for you. That's right. We're going to be playing with every single kit in Roblox Bedwars. There's like 83 of these kits currently, and we're going to play inside the infected mode. This is the new zombie mode. Actually, it's not really new. It's kind of just brought back. It's like our third version of zombies, but we're going to be playing with every single one of them, and let's see how good each one is, and I'm going to be ranking them from the worst to the best. So if you're wondering what the best kits are in this mode, just keep watching. Now, this is a long video, so you might want to check the chapters below if you're just trying to see where your favorite kid is, because every single one of them is inside this video. I always get these comments like, DV, you missed this one or that one. We got them all. Now, a lot of people are thinking, DV, I thought you quit Bedwars. I kind of did and I didn't. I came back, okay? They added the OG Bedwars mode and I'm back in Bedwars. I just usually play maybe once or twice a week. So don't miss out on my streams on Fridays. Typically during update time, I stream the game. All right, so let's just jump straight into it. First up with number 83 is Zenith. You know, now, Zenith is that kit where you can buy a satellite dish and get a bunch of loot off of the enemy team. Well, since zombies can't buy stuff, Zenith is pretty much useless in this mode since you can only get resources when an enemy team buys stuff. And since zombies can't buy stuff, Zenith is pretty much useless since you can't get resources if they're not buying stuff. Zombies can't buy stuff from any shop because they don't have a shop and they can't even use the human shop. They can't buy anything. But since I said I try all kits, here's proof of me using Zenith and then becoming a zombie to absolutely destroy the humans because it's fun. Next is number 82 with Jack, and yes, Jack still sucks. I'm sorry to say that, but it's still a terrible kit. The oil blob is absolutely overpriced, considering you still need an emerald to buy one, and even then, after you use it, it does very little damage. I still don't know why this kit still costs emeralds for the oil. Like, you should be able to buy a ton of these with very little, and honestly, the kit's only good for griefers. You, you know, the oil doesn't even do enough damage to kill a zombie or do anything to enemy players. So let's just consider this a griefer kit. Next up, we have number 81 with Alchemist. And yeah, I had to play as this kit. Yes, it's grief. I really don't think there's much they can do to fix this kit. And it is as bad and infected as it is bad in the main game. But at least uh, it works again because the last time I believe I played with this kit, it didn't even work. Like it spawned one item. I think it was in 30v30s and then it didn't spawn anything else. The only useful with this kit is if you wanted to absolutely grief other players that lag because these cauldrons really really lag also i don't think you can break them as a teammate only the creator can break it and so you could probably really troll with this where if you didn't want people to get out i mean i'm not saying you should do it but i'm just saying it's possible Next one, number 80 is Lonnie, and Lonnie's been a weird one for a while now. So she's supposed to be like Mercy from Overwatch, but the aiming mechanic just doesn't work. Like, it doesn't work for me, at least. I believe it's because you have to be able to see the player, and also they need to be damaged and within a certain range for you to be able to reach them. So otherwise, you go and buy this, you know, healing staff or spear or wand or whatever you want to call it. And then she goes up in the air and basically goes back down because there's no one she can go and zoom to. She's just useless in this mode and in most game modes, but I do remember using her in ranked matches when she was meta. Beyond that, I no idea why anyone would ever use her. Next up with number 79 is Builder. And yes, Builder is a kit that can reinforce blocks, which is great, except the zombie tank has a siege hammer that destroys anything in front of it. So yeah, this kit doesn't work in this mode, period. Next with number 78 is Dino Tamer Dom and Dino Tamer Dom. Um, yeah, this isn't gonna work in this mode. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work. Like, there's no bed to break. Next with number 77 is Raven. And Raven was already bad without this mode, and it's still bad in this game mode. Ravens are still a hefty price, and they don't do enough damage, so this one wasn't worth bothering with much. Like, maybe if you were to get static with a Raven, but against zombies, it's not going to kill them. Next with number 76 is Yeti, and I still can't figure out with this kit if there's anything other than just using your roar to break the blocks beneath you so you can actually have some fun. Like... I, I still don't see any purpose of the Yeti in this mode, so... Next one, number 75, is Spirit Catcher. So Spirit Catcher was once one of the top 10 kits in Bedwars until she got nerfed a dozen times to the point she is absolutely useless now. I feel like the devs just secretly hate her 
and they're just like, you know what? She's too good. She's too good. So we just need to make her worse and worse and worse and worse. She's still not bad enough. So let's nerf her again. And to the point, like she's useless now. So not only is she useless in regular modes, but she's even worse for zombies who barely take any knockback. And beyond that, the spirits are still fun to send at zombies to troll them a bit until they realize, oh, those don't do anything to us. And then they turn around and chase you and bite your head off. So yeah, I, spirit catcher, pretty bad. Don't use her. Next one, number 74 is Bounty Hunter. And with Bounty Hunter, half the time your target camps far away, making it pretty useless because you can't cancel the bounty. So you either need to go to the zombie infested base and kill your bounty, or you just have to hope that someone kills them or they leave the game or something because you can't cancel your bounty. This kit was pretty annoying to use. And, you know, at least just use Caitlyn if you're going to use a kit in this mode, because at least then you can change your targets. Next one, number 73 is Baker. And I had hoped Baker's speed pie would stand a chance at being faster than the rush zombies. And I was very wrong very very wrong this kit used to be good for infected and just isn't anymore with these rush zombies they're too fast man i tried i tried to outrun them and i tried eating apples and i tried and i died so yeah don't use baker next one number 72 is beekeeper beatrix and with beekeeper you buy a hive you place it down and then you go around the map collecting bees to put into it this is all great until the go around the map part when you're being chased by zombies while you're prancing around trying to catch friendly bees in a net to take home. The number of bees required in order for us to be able to get enough loot dropping from the beehive is not enough to make it worth it. Like you could have just gathered a bunch of resources around the map directly and had 10 times the loot that you get from this thing. Like the extra iron just isn't worth it. Next up with number 71 is smoke and the smoke kit is a very dangerous kit to use in this mode and it's not versus the zombies and it's not because of the zombies it's against your own team with the smoke kit you can either use a smoke bomb which makes you invisible for a short period of time or you can use the smoke blocks which look like blocks but aren't exactly blocks because they don't have collision on them so think about that carefully no collision on blocks and then think about the average skill of the players in this mode and you can kind of figure out what's about to happen yet yeah. This kit is all about creating more zombies. All I'm gonna say, don't make more zombies. Next up with number 70 is Farmer Cletus. And for 200 iron, Farmer Cletus can buy a pumpkin seed, which after being harvested will give players an exploding pumpkin. The pumpkin obviously does a lot of damage, but once you harvest the pumpkin, your crop goes away. So you can't reuse it. You're not gonna regrow another one which means you need to spend another 200 for each one you want. So if you do the math, 10 pumpkins equals 2000 iron. So it probably isn't really worth it. And I didn't really get a chance to really explore this because by the time I had stuff, um, we were, you know, fully max gen. Um, so not really worth doing the carrots. And then we just started spawn camping them. And I threw some pumpkins at the zombies. It did a lot of damage. I think I may have gotten a kill or two. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much GG. You're not going to have enough time to get 2000 iron if you do. What were you doing the entire match? That's weird. Next up one number 69 is Santa. And okay, so originally I thought Santa was gonna be a trash kit. Like I really thought this kit was gonna be the worst kit on the list or at least maybe down there with Jack. And somewhere along the way, I think the devs buffed this kit to a point that TNT, you know, absolutely smokes everything in sight. Like that is like massive. It's, I think it might be Siege. I don't know if it is, but I think it might be CH TNT. I was too far from it, but uh, I figured this one would be quick. So I decided to build along the way and head over to the enemy base and get a good overlook of the enemy spawn or at least the zombie spawn. And I was gonna chuck some Santa strafe gifts at their spawn, which by the way, we're still limited to three at a time. Um, so, you know, I thought this was just gonna be an easy drop in the hat kind of review of the kit. And then poof, zombies went bye-bye. And I was really surprised. So. The downside is that the bombs are still, you know, a pricey 70 iron, but they're still fun. I mean, they just destroyed a bunch of zombies. So of course I decided to go ahead back and yeah, I was met with a very unhappy tank. So um, I tried to take him out with myself, but it didn't really work out. I think he survived that. <laughs> it was kind of dumb. I was really trying to just take him out with me, but it did not work out. Stupid Santa bombs. They were a little slow. Okay. Next up on number 68 is Cogsworth, and Cogsworth has the ability to purchase and deploy these little helper droids for farming diamonds and emeralds, except this kit hasn't really worked since its release, since the pathfinding for these things are kind of broken. They just never go to the diamond generators or emerald generators, and if they do, they're usually really, really bad at it. And I was going to say this kit was useless for this mode until I accidentally boxed one of my droids in and he couldn't get out. And then something magically happened. I hit the overcharge button and then I heard I got a kill. And I didn't know how I got a kill. I didn't know why I got a kill. I was just randomly 
pressing that button and hoping that the you know droids would do some work and then i realized oh okay these things are like teslas so what i did was i just decided to go outside and start boxing more of them up and yeah um eventually i just kind of let them be and they just started defending the base which was awesome i was getting lots of kills with them the downside is the spike traps tend to kill them so you're going to be going through these guys a lot especially if your team places spikes down which they should but they try to go outside and then they get killed by those things it's pretty sad to watch yeah crazy that they ended up being pretty good for defense i was i was figuring this was going to be a bad one but yeah it's pretty good next with number 67 is warrior and i was not impressed with this one especially with the armor yeah i got the warrior armor but it just wasn't even that good and it wasn't really worth the you know emeralds for it yeah it's pretty cheap to get but is it really worth it i didn't really think it was um you also get a small discount with regular armor but there's just dozens of better kits i'd rather have the damage than the armor and i'm sure you agree with me like just go and get emerald armor if you really want it or, or just get life still. That's all you really need in this game is life still. Next one, number 66 is Milo. And Milo is a really fun kit to use in this mode because you can disguise yourself as a nearby block and your name tag disappears when you're actively disguised as a block. This is very troll this mode since zombies can't really find you and they only have 11 minutes to be able to find you. And if you're in a very remote place out of reach, it's even harder for them to win because your disguise lasts for pretty long. And you can, you know, toggle it on and off to kind of, you know, keep your energy or your, your charge, especially if they're not looking for you. It's pretty easy to do. The downside is, is if you're the last player remaining, unless you have very little time left for winning, they will eventually find you on the map. And so I'd recommend like hiding somewhere far away from players as possible, or even behind the enemy base or zombie base, because they usually aren't looking behind them. They're usually looking ahead of them. You know, they don't turn around and look behind their base looking for a tag. So you could technically hide down there, but if they do turn around and you're not disguised, you're probably gonna, be, you know, get found out. And sadly, someone saw me bridge across and then, yeah, that didn't, that didn't work out so well for me. I, I was hoping I could just stay disguised, but they found me and I died. Maybe you'll do better than me. Next one, number 65 is Metal Detector. And Metal Detector used to be a great farming kit, but the types of resources you get from it now are so diminished, it's not even worth it for this mode or any mode for that matter. I'd much rather use other farming kits, which are guaranteed decent loot. And the fact that you're having to go to random locations around the map to find your loot makes it even crazier to deal with. You're gonna get swarmed quickly by infected and even the worst zombie player can kill you easily as this kit because you're going to places, you're not really paying attention to your surroundings because you're trying to look for that little, you know, the loot spot. Yeah, not a great kit for farming. So with number 64, we have the Fisherman, which is another farming kit like the Metal Detector, which gives you kind of that RNG, like you might get something cool. They're literally the same thing. But with the Fisherman, I found the perfect spot up top here near the, it's like a chimney thing. It's another entrance for the zombies, but it's so high up that it takes them a while to get up there. And so I found it pretty nice because it's like an outlook as well, or an overlook you can see all the zombies when they're heading your way and if they start heading your way you can always drop in if you need to so what i did was i fished up here and it worked great because most of them didn't even come my way fisherman used to be a great farming kit but after his nerfs you'd be very lucky to get anything decent these days for the amount of effort and time it takes it's not really worth it but still during this match i was able to get geared up enough i got enough emeralds i also got enough diamonds to be able to get you know pretty much to a point where i didn't have to fish anymore but it's a decent farming kit. It's not bad. It's not trash, but it's it's decent. Next one, number 63 is Frosty. And just think about it. Snowballs versus zombies. Yeah, Frosty kit's not going to work in this mode. I'm, I tried and I tried and then I failed. It's still a bad kit. Sorry, Snowman fans. It's just not going to work. Next one, number 62 is Croco Wolf. And with Croco Wolf kit, his ability is that he transforms into a beast when his bed is broken, making him faster with increased knockback, which is crazy. And so as you'd assume, since there's no bed inside the zombie mode or infection mode, Croco Wolf should be transformed immediately and you should spawn as the transformed beast mode. And yeah, he is. But with that ability, there are two downsides of this. First of all, Croco Wolf's transformation is on a timer. So you only have like early game with him transformed and it's just a handful of minutes, right? So once that time runs out though, you transform back to a regular, you know, Croco Wolf, which is essentially just a normal player with the Croco Wolf skin. And the other downside is that zombies don't really take knockback. So the knockback effect is really diminished and it's not as powerful as it could be. Still, it's kind of fun to experience. If you haven't done it yet, it's just really fun to just run around super fast against other zombies. Next one, number 61 is Sheep Herder. And so Sheep Herder did get some buffs. In this mode, it's a huge pain since you have to go around collecting sheep that are scattered around the map. I think if they made it so you could see where they are, it'd be much easier and more fun. But because they blend in with the world so much and they're not glowing, it's kind of tough to see them. Sometimes they're in weird spots. It's really, really hard to use this kit. Like it's a pain. 
and the damage isn't even that good when you have a couple of them so you're putting yourself at risk in this mode just for this kit doesn't make any sense unless you're just looking for a challenge i got some early kills with this kit and then i was eventually taken out by zombies because i'm just it was just too weak of a kit next with number 60 is gompy and gompy would have been a great kit in this game mode except for two problems similar to sheep herder right you got to find them they're all around the map and sometimes they're in the middle of the zombie infested areas of the map like the middle areas secondly the ghost does no knockback to the zombies which really was the appeal of this kit in the first place you know the massive knockback i mean it does a lot of knockback and high damage and it's just not enough against zombies so it's a shame that this kit is useless in this mode but hey it's, it's gompy it's still fun to use next up we have number 59 with ignis ignis i don't know but ignis is that kit you probably forgot about like a lot of us forgot about this kit you know it's that one with that spirit bridge thing that heals your teammates and grants a temporary shield yeah that kit yeah, the one thing I can say for certain is it's a great zombie creator since your teammates fall from the bridge that you create, not realizing the bridge is about to disappear. So bye-bye human to the void and hello new zombie. All joking aside though, it can be useful for getting up to high places. Like you can use it to get up to the, you know, top of the buildings and such. Like it's decently useful. Plus you get that bonus armor for a moment. But beyond that, yeah, it's, this is a zombie creator all, all the way. Next with 58 is Inferno Shielder, and Inferno Shielder got a buff not too long ago, and it's still bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried using the shield versus a zombie tank, and the downside is it didn't bounce the damage back at him, which I was really hoping it would do, and I was really disappointed. My day was ruined because I was really hoping that Siege Hammer would have, like, reflected off of me back into the zombie tank's face, but it didn't. It launched me across the map. So, yeah, my day's ruined, dude. I don't use this kit terrible next is number 57 with warden and with zombies respawning so fast and so often i figured you know hey wouldn't warden be kind of cool because he could really annoy those zombies who keep respawning i mean just imagine you get caught by the warden and your respawn is delayed and you're sitting there as a zombie hoping to get back out there because you want to take out that person that just killed you and you're stuck waiting for that timer that will hopefully make you rage quit the game therefore reducing the amount of zombies in the game right like, think about it. I make you mad as a zombie, you rage quit to a new match. GG. I mean, that's like killing them permanently. That's like permadeath, but no, that didn't really work out. Warden by himself isn't that great of a kit anyway. And even then the zombie respawn rate isn't really going to slow down. They're just gonna keep coming anyway. So I'd rather use a damaging kit, but this one's still kind of fun if you wanna, you know, trap zombies and see if any of them rage quit. Next up with number 56 is Wim, and Wim is a terrible kit for this mode. I'm sorry if you're a big fan of him. I don't mean to hurt your feelings, all right? But let's face it, it's terrible. You've got a projectile, right? This book that barely does any damage to, you know, any zombie because they're HP. They're, they've got way more health. And so you're going to be like pew pew at a zombie with the little book. It's just not going to cut it unless, you know, they're getting bow spammed to death and you got maybe the final hit on it because you got lucky on your shot. Yeah, most of these are going to just not do enough damage. And then you have the four minute timer per book spawn. If you remember that, yeah, the book spawns every four minutes or something like that. It's around there. And that means you're only going to have two additional spells you can use during the match. And if you get unlucky, like I did every single match, you're going to get the stupid healing one, which you don't need because there's life still. Life still is better than that. Yeah, I'm not really, you know, a fan of this one, especially with the book being like in the middle of, you know, zombie land that you got to go and pick up for that effect. It's just not worth it. This is basically another zombie creating kit, meaning you're going to create a zombie out of yourself from dying. Next to number 55 is Gingerbread Man, and Gingerbread Man's only purpose in this game mode is to go to the shop, buy gumdrops, and give them to other players so they can get a free shield and use it to bounce around the map like a flea circus. Like, that's pretty much all there is to this kit, okay? Literally, just give everyone gumdrops, give them shields, and just let, you know, let them go bounce everywhere. I mean, it's fun. Just let them do it. Next one, number 54, is Vulcan, and, you know, the Turk could be good and should have been good against zombies, but surprisingly it isn't the zombies don't really take a whole lot of knockback period and their health makes them really hard to kill with the turret unless you're you know hitting zombies who have already been damaged by other players like arrows or some other way not going to do enough damage to kill them unless you get lucky and on top of that it's pretty easily taken out by the average skilled zombie so it's not really worth going out getting an emerald just for a turret that is pretty useless especially with the mobility and hp of zombies like they're going to outrun your turret you're just going to be like you know sitting there vulnerable with your tablet at base and you're going to get killed and 
you're gonna have an abandoned turret just like i've made many abandoned turrets as a zombie like i love playing as a zombie and guess what if i see a vulcan you're dead like i'm taking you out i don't need to worry about your turret because i'm just gonna take you out and all the turrets are disabled that way next up one number 53 is umbra and umbra is a tough one i think you know you can really find ways to troll zombies with this kit by throwing your hat on them and suddenly teleporting to them and surprise or even just that little you know icon that's on their screen and they just keep trying to re you know request that you teleport to them and you don't and they just keep doing it over and over and over until they die or something i mean i guess you could throw a hat on a teammate go out grab your resources and then teleport back or if you you know get ganked by a bunch of zombies you can always teleport back to your base but how often are you gonna do that like there's other way better kits <laughs> next one number 52 is whisper and it should come as no surprise that whisper is a lot of fun to use in this mode and can be even more useful with teammates who know what they're doing but there are two side effects of this if you're not careful first you want to make sure when you go into whisper mode you do so in a no build zone such as you know the upgrade area or the shop areas since otherwise you're going to be joining the zombies after some dummy decides it's funny if it were to suffocate you and just add another zombie that wants to kill him very badly second of all if you're actually a decent whisperer you're going to give too much confidence to whomever you're whispering and then they get like overconfident and then they go against like five zombies and i can't heal them fast enough to be able to handle that next one number 51 is trinity and with trinity i just didn't feel the power with the heals it definitely gave a bit of hp but when you're getting dinged up by multiple zombies your heals just aren't enough for you to be able to keep up with the damage that you're receiving so you're getting way more damage then you're getting heals by yourself and you end up dying. I mean, it's not an invincible kit, but uh, early game though, it was pretty useful. I, I, you know, was able to take out multiple, you know, zombies as this kit. But if you start getting piled on by like three or four, you're probably gonna get killed. Still, even with life still, I wasn't impressed with Trinity for this mode. Next one number 50 is Noel, and Noel is that slime support kit that looks cool and could be OP if your teammates knew what they were doing. Um, Yeah, I mean, this mode is full of a lot of new players, a lot of casual players. So most of the time, you can just guarantee that they have no idea what they're doing and they don't even notice the slimes with them. And half the time they just run off and, you know, do their own thing. But even if you're just solo, you can use the green slime for resource dupe chance, which is a really great perk since you can really help your team get full upgrades quickly the downside with this kit though is you need emeralds in order to be able to even buy the slimes in the first place so next one number 49 is star collector stella and as you know star collector stella can go around the map gather two types of stars one is a critical star and the other is a health star the health star adds additional permanent hit points to you and nearby teammates wherever you're you know wherever you're consuming the star and the critical star adds more critical chance for your attack so you can really boost your team's power and their health just by going around the map collecting the stars and then using them when you're nearby others like you don't want to use them just when you're by yourself you want to go back to spawn or into a group of a lot of players and then use them so it's a really great support kit for this mode but besides that you're still going to need some decent upgrade farm to you know stand a chance versus infected if you don't have a good upgrade farm or you know people aren't really helping you with diamonds you're kind of done next with number 48 is jade and jade was one of the first mobility kits in the game besides baker but when i say mobility i mean like leap mobility not just like speed and in infected she's okay but not amazing what i would say she's best for the mobility aspect of infected being able to go around and get upgrades but then again there are a bunch of other mobility kits that can do a better job and you know it's a good kit but it's not great i, I didn't even see like any kind of knockback with this hammer like maybe i wasn't doing it enough but i didn't see any effect with it next one number 47 is pirate davy and it should be no surprise that many of you have followed me for some time now no, I do not like Pirate Davy. And as a result, I don't really play as him. I don't really like using the cannon. I find it super risky. I've had a few mishaps where I end up in the void. And especially in this mode, I don't really want to launch myself in the void and become a zombie unintentionally. Like intentionally, maybe. Unintentionally, not so much. And what I did do, though, is I wanted to see you know, do a little human test. I wanted to do a little curious human test to see how many zombies I could create just from human curiosity. If I were to plant a bunch of cannons around the, you know, starter area, I'll say just outside a little bit. And sure enough, uh, we made some new zombies on accident. Next one, number 46 is Yamini. Yamini is a great kit for getting around and doing great damage, but with the rush zombies being so fast and having similar dash ability, they also have double jump and they also have great speed. Yamini yeah, is pretty easy to catch up with. Even if you try trolling with like the whole wall climbing ability, uh, you can get caught. Like I was able to catch plenty of Yaminis as the zombie. And you know, yeah, it's decent for avoiding fall damage via last second dashes, but it just isn't good 
overall like you're not gonna absolutely take on an entire zombie horde okay you're, gonna, you're probably gonna die very quickly next one number 45 is cyber and cyber is the perfect kit for someone who's too scared to go outside of the base since you can safely fly your little drone around the map and gather diamonds quickly without dying or is it so here's the issue i have with cyber first of all you're sitting on a tablet while zombies are rushing your base from above and getting in and attacking anyone that is idle or seemingly not paying attention. And so you put yourself at a, as a big bullseye target while you're flying around as a drone. Um, yeah, you can get those diamonds fast and they do help, but all you gotta do is just bridge out there, go get your diamonds, and you could do the same thing just running out there. You don't need to be cyber. On top of that, you could get max gen very quickly in the game. All you got to do is head out, get four diamonds, bring them back to the base, buy that, you know, diamond generator upgrade, and you're set. The game's just going to naturally progress. Everyone's getting diamonds farms. So you don't really need to be cyber. There's way better kits for farming that are going to give you way more loot. Don't really bother with cyber unless you really want to fly around. Next one, number 44, is Merchant Marco. And Merchant Marco is surprisingly good in this mode due to the ability to get out to resources quickly. And then you got the discounts at the shop. So I was able to gear up fast with this kit. And because of the shop discounts, I was able to keep buying more and more and more. So I just kept getting resources back to me, giving me the ability to keep buying stuff, which is really helpful. I, I didn't really see this as a powerful kit and I was expecting this to be a dud, but surprisingly it was helpful for me gearing up quickly and getting out there and doing some damage. So yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by this one. Next one, number 43 is Conquer, and Conquer can buy fire enchant banners, they can buy healing banners, and then there's anti-knockback banners from the shop. And these can be used by any teammates within the range of the banner place. So there's obviously a radius that you have to sit inside and it makes it really, really OP for defense in your base when dealing with waves of zombies trying to, you know, ambush unsuspecting players. Like you can combine this with like upgraded defender statues and spikes and create a circle of protection. You can also add a little bit of blocks to kind of create a forced pass. So they have to end up in your circle. Like you might be able to get like another four or five minutes out of just using these flags. Really a great kit for defense and support. Next one, number 42, is Wizard Xeno. And Wizard's great versus those pesky zombies that like to hide upstairs. You know, they like to kind of get up high and just look down at you. And they're waiting for someone to get a little bit of damage or they're waiting for another zombie to go in for an attack so that they can, you know, gang up on you because they're afraid of you. They're scared. But imagine with your lightning strikes that has really good range, you can hit them up there very easily. The downside is the cooldown is horrendous and you need emeralds in order to be able to upgrade your staff, which is a huge pain. So if you're the one having to gather diamonds for a team that just thinks walling in and hiding is how you win infected matches, seriously, if you're stuck getting all those upgrades, it's kind of a bummer. I mean, you're like halfway through the match by the time you get your, you know, max upgrade. Next one, number 41 is Eldrick the Druid. And this is a kit I haven't used a ton of, but I found it pretty OP because you can heal teammates with your own health, which is a little dangerous because, you know, you're draining your own HP to heal teammates. But if you do it smart and from a distance, you can get a lot of these stacks. And with those stacks, you become more and more powerful. On top of that, you can like life steal from zombies and heal yourself while you're attacking them. So it's kind of like uh, Trinity meets like, so, like life steal, I guess. It's kind of more vampiric than anything. And it gets more and more powerful over time. You do more damage, the more stacks you get. So it's a really, you know, fun kit to use. It's a little bit more complicated, a little harder to use. So it does require some skill to use it properly. But this kit could get really, really OP. And if you do let it get too OP, you're probably going to be spawn camped. Next up with number 40 is Lassie. And Lassie is such a troll, dude. It's so funny pulling unsuspecting zombies off of bridges to me. And most of the time, they had no idea what was going on or happening before they even tried turning around to attack me. I should have lasted them into a group of defender statues and spike traps just to see what would happen. But, um, you know, there's always future matches. Like, we can try that a little bit later, you know? Next one, number 39, is Trapper. And Trapper is such a fun kit to troll with. And even more fun to troll the zombies with a ton of traps everywhere. Just when they think they can get in and then snap, they're stuck. They're stuck in a trap. And then they move again and snap. There's another trap and another and another. Yeah, we did them kind of dirty in this one. And, you know... I'm wondering, were my traps overkill? You decide in the comments below. Me, I, I think I could have used another 100 or two. I don't know, but it was so much fun placing these everywhere. Next one, number 38 is Ares, and Ares is a really powerful kit versus zombies, but he has his limits. Main one being you can only hold so many spears, and once you run out of spears, you gotta go back to the sword because there's a lot of zombies. They're running at you constantly. You run out very quickly. Plus there's iron limitations. So, you know, it's not like you have like thousands of iron that you can just go and buy a bunch of them. So. 
you're going to use your sword a lot more than you're going to use spears, but still the range of the spears is awesome and the damage makes it great versus zombies rushing over bridges. I really enjoyed using this kit, but kind of got tired of buying those spears. I mean, like I said, it's expensive and you just get tired of going back to the shop. Next up at number 37 is Freya, and this kit is usually a beast in modes, but for some reason in this one, after buying her sword, it seemed like it barely made a dent on zombies. Like, we know this kit is really powerful, but I think the main issue is that the zombies are so fast that Freya's slow effect goes unnoticed and doesn't really help, unlike versus humans who are a little slower already. So when you do it against a human, they get really slow, but when you attack zombies, it seemed like they got away pretty easily. There are way better kits for this game mode though. Next up with number 36 is Void Regent. And the Void Regent was an interesting one to use in this mode. And the main reason is for some reason, zombies were scared of me. I thought it was weird, but at first I thought they just didn't see me. And then they just would look at me and run. And I don't know if it's because they saw the Void Axe, they knew what it was, but they just would keep running. And I don't know why, like I still can't figure it out, but maybe you know why they ran from me. Um, usually they run at me, not away from me. Even as Aerie, even as Barbarian with a Rage Blade, they don't run away, but they run at me. But yeah, it was weird. Nice thing about this one is when you hit someone with the axe, it does heal you a bit. So it's pretty OP for this mode, especially if you can get life still. Next up with number 35 is Vanessa. And this kit is fun, but it could be more fun. And the reason why it's not as fun as it could be is the zombies don't really get knocked back. And the whole point of this kit with the triple shot, besides the extra damage, is that you can knock back people like crazy, crazy knockback and put them in the void. Most of the times, like they get triple shots and I'm not really even sure they have any kind of knockback, but most of the time when I triple shot them, they just kind of recover with their double jump. So I don't really know that they're getting any kind of knockback. If they are, it's gotta be minimal. But the kit's a ton of fun to use still, especially if you can get the headhunter because that thing does triple shot too, or even a crossbow would be good. Next up at number 34 is Kalia. And I think we can all agree Kalia is a beast and one of the most powerful kits in the game and amazing at most game modes. But in this mode, not so much. So first of all, to get the fire punch, you need to have three hits on the enemy. And if you're needing three hits, it's already a bad kit to me for this mode. Most OP kits in the game should be able to single shot or double shot enemy zombies. And even if you hit them a third time, they better be dead. There's so many other good kits that do single shot damage that this one's not really needed. Also with the fire punches knockback being useless versus zombies, you're gonna end up taking a lot of damage from them because you can't knock them back from you. You're still, they're gonna be all over you. So the kit is kind of met in this mode without the knockback without the ability to get three hits on most zombies because you should be killing them before you even need that third hit. Next up at number 33 is Yumiko, and I really didn't expect this to be a good kit, but was pleasantly surprised by his ability to disappear and how much that messed with zombies. Like, even me, when I was a zombie and I had to deal with Yumikos, it was annoying because, they, you know, you do one damage to them or even one hit, and then suddenly they disappear. And that's a really, really nice ability for being able to ditch zombies that easily. Like, it was so effective that it was annoying when it would happen to me. And when I was up against a pack of zombies, I would disappear often and just juke them and ditch them. The other thing I really liked about this kit was the mid-range attack of the chakram weapon, which also helped a ton because, you know, zombies, when you're trying to shoot them with an arrow, you have to kind of like charge a little bit to get a direct shot. But the chakram, you can just send it straight to them. There's no like arc to the shot. You go straight to them and it's pretty far. Like it does pretty good distance. And on top of that, you can get one that does a lot of damage. So you can get like, you know, a diamond version. You can get an emerald version. So it's pretty powerful. Way more powerful than arrows. I kind of annoyed everyone with this kit, and then I kind of did a solo win. It was pretty fun. So definitely a great kit to try out. Next one, number 32 is Nyx. And yes, you'll probably want to have Nyx up there higher if you're a big fan of Nyx. I'm not. With Nyx, you can build up your midnight ability through damaging enemies. And once enabled, you can shred through zombies and then charge up for another quick midnight follow-up. So you could technically, if there's enough zombies around, you could technically make this like an infinite loop with the midnight ability. But the downside is while you're doing a lot of damage, unless you pay attention to your health, you may get carried away and die. I've never been a fan of this kit, but if you know how to time your abilities and pay attention to your health, you can pack a punch for zombies and, and potentially spawn camp them. Next with number 31 is Melody, and Melody is one of the best support kits you can use in infected mode. When you're near a group of players and continuously strum your guitar, you'll keep them healed, and you're gonna be able to keep yourself somewhat healed at the same time. So no matter what the zombies tried, they couldn't kill anyone until something silly happened. A barbarian decided to venture out of my reach and go solo against a wave of zombies. He felt so powerful, and this is a common side effect of players not realizing they're being healed, and that's how they're killing things, is that they're not dying because I'm healing them. And then they think, oh, I'm kind of, like no one can take me out. And then they go into a whole wave out of my reach and then die. 
So that happens a lot with, you know, healing kits. If you don't really stay with the, you know, fighter, they're probably going to die. And if you're going to use this kit, just, you know, keep your team alive. You might have to follow them around. Next with number 30 is Zurat and Zurat can fly and breathe fire. Is there really anything else you need to know about it? No, I'm kidding. But really, it's a great kit in this mode. And I absolutely destroyed waves of zombies for a bit. And I even fell into the void like twice and flew back up each time. So it's really helpful. I, I don't even use this kit very often. I found it pretty impressive for this mode, but because of my skill issue using it, I ended up dying and I would have loved to spend more time with this kit, especially with combining like enchants with the, you know, fire breathing abilities. And I, I could already see this being an unstoppable kit. I just don't have enough time with it. So if you're good with this kit, you could probably rank it up higher than I did. But, um, you know, in this case, because I didn't know it very well and I know other kits better, I'm ranking it here. Next up with number 29 is Terra, and Terra is a menace in most game modes, but in Infected, eh, not so much. The ability to throw blocks at zombies camping up high and running at you across the bridge is good, but the damage scale is too slow, meaning you don't really build it up enough to make it worthwhile. Like, it's different than 30v30s, you know, where you can just run into a base and chuck a bunch of, you know, blocks at them. But you can't really do that with zombies because they're usually like maybe two or three of them around each other. And on top of that, you only have a 12 minute match. So you're not really going to get a chance to build up enough damage scale to one shot zombies. Still, it's fun to surprise them and you're going to get plenty of kills with this kit. With number 28, we got Electra, and I didn't expect much from Electra, but it's actually a pretty awesome kit with its dash ability. The mobility helped me get around a lot early game, and we ended up spawn camping the zombies as a result to keep them down. The dash damage that the kit does is also awesome, especially when used correctly, but beyond that, there are other kits that I enjoyed more than this one, but it's just because I don't use this kit very often. I don't I don't really use it like most people do. Next one, number 27 is Yuzi, which is another mobility kit. And Yuzi was very, very powerful versus zombies since you can dive in and out from them, though it has its limits. The main thing I like about this kit is the fact that you can avoid fall damage, which is kind of important when facing zombies. And granted, a lot of other mobility kits can do that too. The difference being is you can get an Emerald Dao. So that's kind of important. That's a big difference between this one and Electra is Electra is kind of weak on damage versus a Yuzi. A Yuzi with an Emerald Dao is going to wipe out an Electra very easily. And it's great for resource gathering. You can get stuff fast. You can also do um, AOE kind of damage with your Dao at zombies. So if you want to leap in and leap out, you can. Next one, number 26 is Seagrid. And Seagrid is that kit with that elk that is incredibly fast and does some big damage. In infection mode, you can use the elk to beat other players to resources like emeralds and diamonds. And you can even use it to get away from zombies quickly, which I really liked because they can't keep up with the elk. What it doesn't do very well is attack zombies. I tried doing that with the elk and it just doesn't do enough damage to the zombies. And I kind of end up dying as a result of that risk. Even so, it's a really fast kit and great for just being able to jump around the map in a weird way. I don't know why it's so wonky, but man, you could just plow through zombies and not really get affected by them. I think it's a good kit. Not the best, but definitely a good kit. Next one, number 25 is Elder Tree, and Elder Tree is a fun one to use in this game mode since there are so many health orbs around the map. You can get a ton of HP very quickly, making it kind of hard for zombies to take you out early game, especially if you can get Diamond Sword as soon as possible. I found the kit to be pretty powerful, but limiting, so you're going to need that life still as soon as you can get it because at some point, those zombies are just going to shred you. So I would say have at least 500 HP. Ideally more, like if you can get like 700 to 800, great, but you're gonna get piled on due to your size and just the fact that you don't really have any armor and they shred. Like I got I got torn apart quite often, even with life still, it's pretty tough. So definitely keep getting that HP. Next one, number 24 is Miner, and Miner is one of those kits that require very little effort to get stacked. With Miner, when you kill an enemy on land, their body turns to stone, and you can mine that body for resources, which scale depending on how powerful the enemy you killed is. You can get iron, diamonds, and emeralds, and that means you don't really need to leave your base for resources unless you really want to, especially if you start off with the diamond generator. Still, Miner can get stacked very quickly, which really does tip that scale for zombies early game, because when you have a diamond sword and diamond armor, and they're still working on their diamond swords, you're taking them out. Next one, number 23 is Cobalt. And when he takes damage, Cobalt does drop those, you know, shield batteries, which when you pick them up, they give you shields. And if you pick up three of them, your character goes into like a wacky overload mode where he goes fast and he can do a lot more damage. This makes it really hard for zombies to kill you because you're constantly taking damage from them and you're constantly picking up those batteries. If, you know, as long as you're playing correctly, over time, you're going to continue to get, you know, your health depleted. And unless you escape them or you have life still, you're going to be trouble free. So make sure you get life still. Very important 
super cobalt and you know with that life still you can just head over and spawn camp you just need diamond armor diamond sword and life still and you can head over there and spawn camp them all day next with number 22 is attitude day and i bet you thought attitude day would be higher up on this list and nope it's not because it's terrible okay no it's not that bad you know there are some skilled players who can make attitude day look good but the average player with attitude day is not going to make him look good like i've killed so many attitude days and personally using attitude day i was not impressed with this kit and the main reason is um with attitude day you level up your axe right and you get those crystals from damaging zombies and yes you get a lot of crystals very quickly but the progression is much slower than our top kits in this video if your team is sailing and dying rapidly, you're going to get overrun quick and you're going to be stuck with this battle axe trying to survive against zombies um, unless you run away. But your battle axe is not going to do enough damage if you're getting overrun. It just won't. Like, even if you have a bunch of upgrades, it just won't be enough. And that's what I experienced firsthand. And, you know, even with life still, you're going to get killed. Like, your, your battle axe, unless you have that really fast cooldown, you're going to get overrun very easily. Now, if you have a good team, even a decent team, that doesn't get overrun and there's not that many skilled zombies, you can probably have a really good match with this kit. But the fact that you have to hope for that is the problem. Whereas like Barbarian or Airy or some of these other kits we're gonna be talking about, they don't need that. They don't need a good team. They're just the team. And I know that sounds very arrogant, but they are the team. They're the ones carrying. So this isn't not a carrying kit. You need to rely on a decent team for this kit. That's why I don't really like it. Next one, number 21 is Flora. And Flora is one of several bee kits in the game. And I think the devs like bees. Something tells me that. But yes, this kit is really good in this mode since you can get so many kills and you can get kill assist, which means, guess what? Beehive grenades. Yeah, these little grenade things that do crazy damage. I mean, you can just keep launching these at the zombies and you're going to get more of them because the zombies eventually die. Like They always die. So given that, you could spawn camp with them, but you need a good support team to be able to do that because if you run out of grenades, you're probably going to die. One thing that I kept forgetting to use, though, is the glide ability that the kit has. And my thing is, dude, I just like killing pixels. That's why I just kept using the grenades but yeah i should have used a sore more next one number 20 is lila and yeah this one's a beast versus infected the one thing that i kept forgetting to do during some earlier tests with this kit was to buy the lila bow because you start out with a wooden bow for free not the lila bow you start out with the normal bow for free and so you want to buy her bow as soon as you can to be able to get that extra damage from hitting enemies and that causes bees to attack them over time if you really want to get called a hacker, get her crossbow as fast as you can, and you're going to shred enemies. A place I like to bow spam from, I mean shoot from, <laughs> is the second floor since you can get a good view of all the incoming zombies and start causing them damage before they even reach your base. Just make sure to add a statue defender guy next to you so you don't get ganked by the sneaky zombies because they like to sneak, dude. I don't know how, but they got to be some of the most patient players in the world because I've seen them like sit there for two minutes just waiting for an opportunity. It's hilarious. But yeah, just make sure you keep an eye out or at least put a defender next to you. So at number 19, we have Talia, and this is the chickens versus zombies day. Like, yeah, it's a sight to see. You gotta see this, you gotta try it. But Talia is a menace to zombies with her chickens. They're insanely powerful and they can chase the zombies anywhere. The downside is the cost of chickens can get pretty steep. Like it's already expensive when they hit 75, but once they hit an emerald, you gotta hope they got enough emeralds to be able to continue to buy them. But still, fun to see zombies running away from chickens. Like it's so troll. Next up at number 18 is Ember. And so out of all these kits, I struggled the most with Ember because I just couldn't pull it. You know, first of all, you need emeralds to be able to get your sword. And two, we just kept getting overrun. And on top of that, I just kept getting picked as a zombie. It was really annoying. And it could have just been because I was super tired from, you know, reviewing so many kits. Like this is a lot of work if you think about it. Like it's no joke. Like it's a lot of games. But this kit is great against zombies and not as good as Lumen kit, but still really good. And it's because of Lumen's ranged ability, whereas Ember has to be really close to zombies. And as a result, you really need that life still. That way, if you're getting swarmed, you don't die. And without it, you're going to die. Speaking of Lumen with number 17, Lumen is quite the menace in this mode. Once you acquire the light sword, which isn't the cheapest, but it's not too hard to get early as long as you don't sell to a rusher zombie who, you know, thinks they can kill you. And yeah, sometimes they get a little tricky and do kill you. But the sword has two phases. The first phase is slow, but it's still pretty deadly given some aim. And the second phase, once you've damaged enough zombies, is a burst shot with a much larger projectile. The interesting thing is I noticed that it was, you know, hitting zombies through blocks, which I don't remember the projectile doing. Let me know in the comments below if it's always done that, but I don't remember that happening. It used to have, like, it would actually get blocked by 
a few blocks and they must have made it so they can go through blocks i'm not sure but having said that the aiming mechanic is still a bit weird where you have to aim a little bit lower to hit your target and i was hoping they would fix that but they haven't fixed it so um, still crazy good and OP with his ranged attacks and the amount of damage the sword gives itself like for melee is pretty unreal. Next up at number 16 is Evelyn and when this game mode first came out over the weekend players kept saying Evelyn was broken and OP and yet I keep killing Evelyn kit users. I don't know if they've figured something out that I haven't or other people haven't but I have yet to run into an Evelyn I couldn't kill and so I decided to give the kit a go and yet the kit is not broken. It not good <laughs> i'm sorry i mean it's good don't get me wrong i think it's just overrated and i think honestly it could be that just, they just went up against bad zombies because uh, i'm a decent zombie in fact i'm a really good zombie and i kill them all the time but even so like okay as a evelyn kit sure you can teleport between zombies after you attack them i mean it's it's the evelyn kit everyone knows how to use this kit i think and the problem is if you don't have good enough gear and you're not healing yourself you can get yourself into you know trouble very quickly just by teleporting around and constantly shielding it's a little delayed and the shield is not going to keep up it's, it's kind of like using cobalt you know at some point you're going to die if you don't get some heals so yeah not the best kit in the world and it's definitely not op now entering our top 15 we got caitlin and if you thought caitlin would be great for this mode you're right she does a lot of damage and contracts are pretty easy to complete since the zombies are always coming at you plus you can choose them which is a little bit different than bounty hunter at least you can choose them and what i like to do is choose the ones that are like closest to me so i know they're not stuck at base so the other thing that's great about this kit is you can cancel contracts the only downside is the like refresh for contracts does take a lot of time so i feel like there's a lot of time wasted with this kit where you could get op faster if you didn't have to wait for you know contract refreshes because your attacks are essentially a dot which is a damage over time effect and what that means is kind of like fire fire is considered a dot and that's what happens with this kit is your attack starts causing damage much like fire to them and they run away because they're getting damaged and they don't understand why and they don't know how often they're going to get damaged so they're not going to keep attacking you which means they're going to run off which is good and bad like you want to just die but if they run away they're not attacking you anymore which is also good next one number 14 is archer and archer has that tactical crossbow which can eventually lead to one shotting enemies even better if you can afford the tactical headhunter which i didn't get enough time to be able to use since we demolished the team and ended up spawn camping them that's how hard we went on this one so i went straight for that tactical crossbow and just with the tactical it's insanely powerful like this thing does so much damage on top of that it's one emerald cheaper than a regular crossbow it's only six emeralds so you get a, a tactical crossbow for six m's unlike a regular crossbow for seven plus you're doing a lot more arrow damage just overall great kit for this mode next one number 13 is axolotl amy and amy is still an insanely powerful kit in the game and generally unstoppable early game due to the low cost of buying defense damage and regen axolotls they only cost iron and eventually i think the fourth one which is the block damage one that one costs emeralds and comparing this kit to other kits it's definitely in the top 10 damagers in my opinion due to the boosts that the axolotls give you the other great thing about this kit is you know other teammates can share in the defense and health regen axolotls so when they take a little bit of damage or fall or whatnot um the axolotls get sent to them so it's pretty crazy how good this kit is people don't really understand how this kit works i think next up one number 12 is leon and leon is such an op kit versus zombies i didn't think it would be and the extra damage from swords is unreal i generally use the sword throw basically it's like a dagger throw um due to the long cooldown of refilling or regenerating another sword and that was more than enough to be able to double tap zombies flying at me so i would send one at a rusher and then i would just one tap them and a few times i use the ultimate which is the other effect which um throws all your swords at once and then causes you know fire and i didn't really find it worth it especially you know considering how many zombies are constantly attacking you you want that constant sword ability otherwise you run out of swords you're kind of you know a sitting duck despite how powerful this kit is generally speaking life steal diamond sword and diamond armor are going to give you enough power to be able to handle most zombies and potentially spawn camp them next up one number 11 is fortuna and if x-men's gambit had a kit in bed wars it would be this one it would be fortuna fortuna's ranged card throw attack is perfect for this mode since you can scale your damage through card upgrades through causing damage or getting kills using the card attack the range attack is awesome since you know you pretty much just locks onto a zombie you target and it follows them requiring no aim skill whatsoever so you lock onto them launch it and it follows them wherever they're going just target and launch it can really mess with the zombies too since they didn't expect the damage and usually they run away as a result of that they don't know where it came from they just run 
And finally, we're entering our top 10. Most of these should not be a surprise, but maybe they will be. So number 10 is Hannah. And Hannah is a deadly kid in this game. But considering how much of a glass cannon she is, you need to be super careful with her and try to stick with groups because she can get swarmed by zombies so easily. Now, if you're with a group, you can keep your combo up pretty nicely, which makes it easy to kill zombies nearby because they're mostly damaged. The downside is if you end up solo somehow, you have to apply the damage yourself to be able to get those executions. And that gets a bit tricky because you're already kind of low HP as a kit, similar to Aerie. And that makes it risky. So it's certainly not a top five kit in this mode, but it's a great kit all the same. Next up on number nine is Driller. Yep, a farming kit made it to the top 10. In fact, two farming kits made it to the top 10. Uh, we'll get to the other one in a little bit, but Driller is an amazing farming kit, especially if you focus on the emerald generators or the game. That way you get fresh emeralds delivered to you every cycle and you can get stacked quickly. The best approach for this is to buy a second emerald drill and place it in an area zombies don't usually travel from. Then go to a diamond generator nearby and collect four diamonds so that way you can get the diamond generator. I know that sounds weird, but hopefully that makes sense. I'm talking about the diamond generator upgrade after you get four diamonds. As long as you keep your drills or at least one of the drills in the game, you're going to be stacked with emerald armor and an emerald sword pretty quickly. And then just grab life still and go spawn camp. I mean, drills are amazing, but Lucia is still a better kit, which we're going to get into a little bit. Next one, number eight is Crypt. And with Crypt, you harvest souls from gravestones of dead players. And this is an insanely powerful kit in this mode since zombies are constantly dying, giving you loads of gravestones all over the place. They're spread everywhere. And the crazy thing is this kit actually is broken in this mode. Um, infected players cannot kill skeletons with melee, period. Like I tried and I could not kill them. They receive zero damage. But you know what does kill skeletons? Spike traps and your own team spike traps. So be careful with that. If you don't want them to die, um, just stay away from the team spike traps. It's kind of sad. It's going back to the skeletons, you can easily spawn camp early game with them because you get so many of them and it's really overpowered. It's one of the most broken aspects in the game. It probably is the truly most broken kit in the game where enemy players can't even kill the skeletons and they just get destroyed. The good news is there's a limit on how many skeletons can be spawned. And the only reason why I know that is I kept hitting that limit. I kept getting the notification because I kept trying to spawn new ones in the enemy spawn, but they can't kill my skeleton. So it's a GG. Next one number seven is Sheila. And Sheila is easily one of my favorite kits in the game these days. I'd say she's in my top three since anytime I see someone playing as her, I want to hop into Bed Wars and play. I love kits that become more and more powerful the more damage or kills you get. And that's exactly what this kit's all about. And even better that she can self heal, which combined with life still, she's an absolute bully of a kit. You can't kill her. With Sheila, it's easy to get that egg hatched early since waves of brainless zombies charge at you and die while feeding your seahorse egg points so it can hatch and level up. The kit really becomes unstoppable in a short period of time. And even better if you're hanging out with a barbarian or airy since you can carry them with your heels. This is definitely my go-to kit when I want to chill in a game and just let the seahorse do all the work because you really don't need to think with this kit. Get some kills and let the seahorse do all the work. Next one, number six is pyro and if there was a kit that could be considered a zombie exterminator pyro would be it you get fed so much as a pyro the zombies literally have no chance against you seriously the kit is insanely good especially with the brittle damage effect that gets applied to zombies which makes them just go poof so when using pyro i tend to prefer upgrading the range tree first so i can get more ember drops from kill assist after that you can switch to whatever upgrade paths you prefer but you don't really need much to wipe them out like it's really really powerful if you haven't used pyro in this mode he's an absolute must try like it's that fun next up we have lucia and so i expected this kit to be good but not this good this is hands down the best farming kit in this game mode and you really don't need that much to be able to build up a ton of candy which you can then put into a pinata and break for loot it's really easy for you to build a damage a bunch of zombies get a bunch of candy run over and place the candy in a pinata and break it once you have at least 200 candy and i'm saying at least obviously more candy means more loot but i prefer to get the loot as fast as possible and i found 200 to be pretty good for the first run and you need to repeat that one or two more times to be able to get that emerald armor yeah she's a beast of a kit and easily top five in this mode Next up with number four is Grim Reaper. And this kit is one of my favorite kits in this mode since you can kill a rusher zombie, absorb their soul, heal while invulnerable with fast speed, and then repeat the process until an entire group of zombies are dead. Seriously, if John Wick had a kit in Bed Wars, this is that kit. It's pretty crazy when you face a group of zombies and you kill one of them, do your thing to heal, and then one's just standing there waiting for you to stop and you come back at them fully healed. And then it just, you repeat that process until you wipe them all out. It's really crazy kit, one of the best in the game. Next up at number three is Zephyr. And I still don't get why this kit isn't just called the hacker kit. 
Zephyr literally eats zombies for breakfast. You get wind, aka feather stacks from assists, so you can just throw a few fireballs towards zombies. And you're always almost going to have a full five stack, making you unstoppable, especially if you can snag life still during the match. The amount of damage you can do and the ability to double jump, just like the zombies you're facing, makes you their worst nightmare in a match. If your team doesn't completely sell and you can gear up, it's a GG already. Next up, win number two is Aerie, and yep, Aerie came in second on this one. I, it was kind of a tie for first, but I, I have a few reasons why Aerie is in second place. So Aerie is still hands down one of the best kits in the game, especially versus brainless zombies who just endlessly feed you. Without much effort, you can start one-shotting these guys, and over time, you can start one-shotting even zombie tanks. It does take a lot of kills, though. I once saw a player almost reach 500 kills as Aerie spawn camping. That's how good Aerie is. Once she's fed, she's a beast, but the fact that she only starts with 90 HP makes her a glass cannon. And on top of that, we'll get into a little bit why Barbarian's better, but they're pretty close tied. Like I honestly prefer Aerie because I just feel like it's more fun um, than Barbarian. And you can choose the swords, you're not controlled. You can get a, you know, a diamond sword fast or early if you want to, you don't have to wait for that rage. But the rage builds pretty fast with Barbarian. So speaking of number one is Barbarian. And when it comes to damage output, I would pit Barbarian versus Aerie since both can one shot zombies pretty easily. But what makes Barbarian better than Aerie is that you can get a Rage Blade very early in the game, whereas Aerie requires more kills to start seeing equivalent damage. In the end, Aerie can surpass the damage of a Rage Blade with any sword, but the damage curve is much faster with the Barbarian, making it a better kit overall because of the fact that you don't have to have a ton of kills to have that damage. The other aspect is Barbarian has a full 100 HP, whereas Aerie has 90 HP, making her a glass cannon compared to the Barbarian. But yeah, Barb is a spawn camping machine. Like literally most of the time you're gonna see a Barbarian if they get Rage Blade, and if they get live still it's gg like the spawn's gone everyone's dead anyway that was a lot of fun it was very tiring this video took a long time to do i i'm pretty sure i have about 20 hours into this video so if you liked it if you could do me a solid and hit that like button and if you'd like to see more videos like this one please subscribe i will see you all in the next vid peace